So here is our, our outboard. So the manual says that uh, valve clearance should be checked every 20 hours and adjusted every 200 hours or once a year. I have done it uh, about two years ago, so it's time to check the valve clearance. Manual says that you sh should take this cover off so you can see where the timing mark is, so you can line it with the top dead center mark. Then to take the uh, spark plug out to check that the piston is on the top dead center. And after that, you can check if the valves are uh, moving. Take the assembly away, you need to loosen the gear gable. There is a spring. Put it in neutral and so you can pop it out and then loosen this 10 middle middle nut and it, the gable comes off. It's also necessary to take the tank loose, so you can get a little bit more room to play. Maybe. Then it's time to take the spark plug out, so you can make sure that the piston is in the top ten center mark. After the spark plug, we can take the cover out. Then we can see the valve rocket arms. As you can see the bottom bolts are a little bit trickier because the cover is just on the way. In the way. So here is a little bit of oil of course. Now that the rocker arm cover is off we need to determine the stroke we are doing the valve adjustment. Both valves are uh, up, so we know that the piston is uh, almost to the top dead center, but in which stroke, that is the question. The bottom valve is exhaust valve, because the exhaust port is down here 
and uh, top one is intake valve because the carburetor brings the air fuel mix on the top side of the cylinder head. So to determine the right stroke where the valve clearance is done, we need to spin the motor from the flywheel and watch how the valves are moving. The adjustment is done in a compression stroke top dead center point. So we know that when the intake valve comes up and the piston is in a top dead center, that is a compression stroke top dead center point. So we are starting to spin the flywheel and notice it that the exhaust valve is pushing down. So we know that was an exhaust stroke and then the intake stroke begins and the intake valve is pushing. Now the piston is at the bottom part of the stroke. Now it starts to come up and the intake stroke is coming up again. And when they are moved both up and the piston is in a top dead center, which we can feel by the screwdriver, we know that that is a compression stroke top dead center mark. That is the point where to start the adjustment. So we can select the feeler that is one tenth, that is uh, one five hundredths, so that is the uh, closest, closest we have. So that is the one that we are adjusting it. So it should be should be snug with this 500 because the clearance is from 300 to 700. So to adjust the clearance, the uh, adjust nut is 14 millimeters and the lock nut it's 10 millimeters. Loosen up the lock nut and then adjust the point. So this is 500. I don't know if you can see it, but feeler gauge goes between valve stop and the rocket arm, between valve stop and the rocket arm. That should be the clearance of three to seven hundreds. And I have that five hundred feeler gates. So, uh, tightening torque of the lock nut is about 10 newton meters, so it shouldn't be tight at all. Now it's pretty loose, so free it again. This may take a couple of tries, so you won't tighten or loosen the clearance when you are tightening the lock nut. Feeler gauge should slide just in the between rocket arm and the valve, valve stop, uh, valve stop, top of the valve. I mean, so why there is clearance? on these rocket arms because of the middle expanse when it goes
it gets hotter so that the, there is not too tight connections so nothing is breaking and when it's too loose there is too much play when the engine is hot in that case something will broke also so it should be snug manual says 300 to 700 of millimeters the clearance and that is it then we take put the cover back on make sure that the gasket is okay to move that it doesn't it didn't break down and then we put the gasket back on a gasket back on top back on